So, the last few years, like I said, I've been researching lots of stuff and having dreams and just random things like, you know, I got into a bit of board game designing and I had these ideas for characters in the game um, and I gave them specific names and then that must have bled into my dreams and affected my dream. So then I um, I dreamt about some pretty crazy stuff um, that was linked with the basic concepts that I developed the night before in my game. Um, and the name that I gave for these things that showed up in my dream um, was actually the, the, the a name of a of a moon that soak was a planet so I started researching that moon found some interesting stuff there um, then looked at the planet that it's a moon of found some interesting stuff there um, and it wasn't just that you know I made this game and then had a dream and I thought wow it must mean something um, it was quite literally about five days later I was at a friend's place telling them about the dream I had because it was just so visceral and like fuck man um, I won't share any of the content because that's not the point and I just want to be focused on what the point is right now. I don't want to detract. This is as much detraction as I'll be doing. Um, but yeah, I was at a friend's place and I told her about the dream and then I said, you know, it's funny these things record this because the night before when I was making my, my game pieces, um, I decided I wanted to call these pieces this. And then as I said it, on the television, there was a, a documentary um, talking about well, Titan. There you go, detracting again. But who knows? It might be relevant. Um, talking about Titan at the same time that I was literally just saying it to my friend. Um, and you know, it could have been subliminal. Maybe it was already talking about it beforehand, and I didn't know. But subconsciously, I picked up, and then they reminded me, and then I talked about my dream. But I'm pretty certain I was talking about my dream for a few minutes. Um, and this thing had just been introduced, this part of the exploration of Saturn and all that. So um, so I thought, okay, that's a bit coincidental. And, you know, when things like that happen, when you have little synchronicities, generally I think it's a bit of a sign or a nudge um, to look deeper into it, to follow uh, the rabbit trail, I suppose go into the rabbit hole so that led me to a lot of different things a lot of different topics um, a lot of it you know stems back to Antarctica that seems to be a source of a lot of mystery um, and a lot of interest by the powers that be um, there's, there's a lot of stuff going on a lot and I will be um, opening a channel because I do have my walking and talking with Phoenix channel where I just talk about stuff that was on my mind with daily happenings and more psychological and human experiences and how to deal with different things and you know it was more human um, but for a long time I've been a very esoteric somewhat mystical people would call it because it mystifies them um, I still consider a lot of it scientific and that's one of my biggest aims is to actually merge spirituality and religion and the concepts therein with models of science that people can actually grasp more solidly and have faith in or belief in because it makes more sense um, and I won't be doing it in a way that Scientology has apparently bridged the gap um, that's something else Scientology that is that's just an arc of some sort um, but you know I want to I want to merge it all and come up with a comprehensive and concise and you know simple format so that people can easily understand these very profound and somewhat complex truths. And I was just talking in that previous video about you know you see a lot of the same things coming up in film and you see a lot of the same um, messages and stories and archetypes being expressed through different characters, even actors. You will notice that you have certain actors when they become more 
influential and well known they will start to take similar roles and I know that people say well that's typecasting but quite literally they, they seem to have very strong themes that they keep entering and re-entering into like Scarlett Johansson is just a, just one person that comes to mind um, if you look at a list of her, all her movies um, you will notice there's a lot of transhumanism um, AI, robotic, becoming more than human, becoming alien um, the same thing with her um, you know, and you know, as I was saying before, it's not that there's a conspiracy, and it's not that there's these people that are saying, "Okay, you've got to, you're going to make sure you tell the story this way, and make sure she keeps doing these same roles." I think my idea of the truth, as bizarre as it will sound, um, makes more sense, at least hypothetically. All right, it's just a theory. It makes more sense in that it would explain why there's so many coincidences in the world, why there's the hundredth monkey effect, you know, and if you don't know what that is, it's when when you get to a hundred monkeys on one island, they, they were observing these monkeys, and they used to just pull the, the food out of the ground, the vegetables, and just eat it with the dirt, the dirt on the vegetables, and then um, some monkeys learn to start washing the vegetables first, and then eat it. After one hundred monkeys did this on this separate island, remote, on another island, the monkeys there also started to change their behavior and wash their food first before eating it. Which hinted at the idea that of the new sphere, as a science refers to it as, or as a ground unconscious, as Jung goes on about, how we're all united on a field of information. Kind of like a blanket of information, and you have different shapes coming up at different parts of it. Um, for those that have seen I Heart Huckabees, you'll get what I'm talking. Uh, but it's all the same blanket, it's all the same information, just dancing around, taking different shapes that seem separate, but it's all unified. And that's when you start getting into quantum physics and how this particle affects that particle, and quantum entanglement and how everything is entangled. Um, and yeah, I think, going back to why I think there's all these synchronicities, besides the fact that everything is unified, so that's why we do have access to information once it's consolidated substantially enough by enough people or by one person alone. I'm not sure how it works, but it seems that once it gets to a certain level, um, then it becomes more accessible by everyone instinctively, inspirationally, intuitively, all the inwards. Um, because as my good friend in the, back in the day, uh, Anton from Israel, once told me, the world exists inside of you, and you exist outside of yourself. Which means that the world of information, the macro in the micro, exists inside of you. So you can access information internally and answer any question you can ask about anything in the world however remote you can find out information about it because we're all connected through quantum entanglement through that field of information that blanket and that's what I do with my divinations and my tarot and my, my dictionary and the, finding the words and the answers to my questions it's I'm not I'm not you know psychic and I'm not clairvoyant I mean sometimes I'll pick up images and I'll just come to know things um, about people but I wouldn't call myself clairvoyant or anything like that. Um, I think everyone has that ability, um, you know, especially through proximity, we rub off, um, whether it's our astral double, our aura, and we pick up information about each other. We all have the ability, but like I said, we've been repressed, and our consciousness has been repressed, and we've been limited, so that we don't overcome the deception, so that we don't see through the deception, and, and, and overcome the strife, and overcome... Um, this giant thumb that we are currently under. All right? And my truth is this. The truth that explains all of it is, you know, I always heard about higher self, and I always heard about guardians and guides, and angels and demons, and principalities. And I always thought that, you know, that I think there's a bit of truth to it, you know, because... 
sometimes it seems like there's there's two things going on in each man and woman. On one hand, you're you could be, you know, like for example, you know, I, I could be going off like I I, I once dated this girl, um, and we used to argue sometimes, and sometimes I'd just be I'd be so upset and and you know angry. I'd say the most hurtful things. And while saying these hurtful things, I'd be feeling inside my heart, you know, I'd be saying to myself, like, I heard this voice, and I'd be saying, dude, what are you doing? No, don't, don't, don't do that. You know, you're hurting her feelings. She doesn't deserve that. It's not fair. Don't say that. And I, it's like, you know, what possessed me? What possessed me? Because I definitely wasn't in control, and I feel that sometimes when our fire gets to a certain level, that it feels like the door opens and something can come through and literally take over the gear stick and the wheel. And it's like, you know, it's like it's not the same as when you commit to hitting a fly in your arm and then, like, if you're like me and you care for life regardless of scale, you're like, oh, no, don't hit. Ah, oh, damn, I hit it. Because you committed and you just followed through your reflex. It's not like that. It's like you can literally see yourself doing something wrong. And you know what's wrong. And you, you hear that voice saying, don't. Don't do that. Don't do that. And you just, it's like there's a disconnect and that dialogue inside yourself isn't even a dialogue, it's a monologue and you're not receiving the words. You're on autopilot and something else has taken the reins, which might explain the expression, I wonder what possessed him to do that. All right? Or to lose your cool because one gets fiery and allows the more destructive, fiery forces to get under our skin. So, I think what would explain best, finally, getting to the point, and this isn't even what I wanted to get off my chest, <laughs> it's turned into a bit of an adventure now, but whatever, is that I, more than ever now, I feel strongly and I believe that there are hidden forces and hidden hands, puppeteers, and I, I've always written about this, I've always written about a, a great puzzle master and a puppeteer and, you know, a pu master puzzler putting all the pieces together and we all think we're all just like, you know, in control but the more you abandon control and stop trying to think about everything and plan and force outcomes you'll find that there is a flow just like the way bees and any other, a lot of other animals operate that unites us and brings us to where we need to be at the right time and that all the chips if you let them fall where they may you'll find that they don't just form random abstract patterns it actually makes meaningful cohesive structures kind of like giving the reins to chaos but you need a little bit of control you need to you need to plan a little bit and you need to get your feet on the ground you can't just give the reins to chaos but for the most part i go with the flow and I've always understood that. But now, even more intimately, I feel I'm really close to understanding almost as exactly as one can in this world um, what the forces are and what the end game is. And more of an, I have more of an idea now of what this is, this reality, this life, why we're here, why do we have all the trials, the tribulations. And like I said, there's been a lot of revelations, and it really was was started. It was really triggered. I met with a a guy who's very much on the same wavelength as me a few weeks ago, and we were talking and talking and going really deep down the tunnel hole, uh, the rabbit hole, and just you know just not finishing each other's sentences, but we both knew exactly what the other was saying, we were able to add new information that the other didn't have. It was like we both were from the same book, on the same quest, um, but yin and yang, like perfect complementary information. Like we had the answers to each other's questions and the right data. Um, and then the craziest thing happened. You know, and that's, that's what we were talking about, by the way. We were talking about the world and is it a simulation or is it a simulation for prison and maybe we all committed crimes and we're trying to prove through the simulations that we can be restored and if we pass the test then we let free in the real world and if we don't then we stay in prison could just be a simulation we're talking about all this and we're talking about 
governing forces, principalities, um, and trying to make it scientific. We're, we're going to bring it down to basically oxygen and hydrogen um, is where I ended up taking it. And I was thinking that, you know, what if everything is just a, all the destruction and all the restorative, creative forces in the world that we see, all these destructive and creative forces, what if they are just ultimate expressions um, of, you know, hydrogen and oxygen and these primary, most abundant um, elements in the world. Um, you know, because you know, if, if you want to understand the macro, it would make sense that you go down to the micro, to the most fundamental building blocks, and you look at the nature and the characteristics of them. Um, and we, we made some very interesting connections talking about that. And the rough gist that I think has makes a lot of sense is that the more hydrogen um, you take in, you know, the hotter you get, the fire, more fire you get. It's like a doorway. You become more open to malevolent, destructive forces that will steer you, steer your behavior. And the more you breathe, you know, not when you get angry and get hot, drinking alcohol, spirits, fire water, and that makes you hot and makes you open and vulnerable to just losing your shit, right? Being possessed, what possessed them. Um, but when you know you breathe oxygen, and I've read like years ago that the heart pumps oxygen, and oxygen is actually a medium for information. Um, God's information um, and it's pumped from the heart through the body um, and it just distributes basically data throughout your whole body to be processed. And I've always read the connection between ether, ether and um, information and wisdom and knowledge and even God in the Bible, you know, said that, you know, I am the Word. First there was the Word and I thought, what if that is literal? What if, you know, because I, I view God as a mathematician. I view this as, you know, this is just a fourth dimension. You can look up E8 and how this is just a small shadow photograph, past tense, um, symptom, a symptomatic expression, a leftover crumb of a much bigger reality on a much higher level we cannot even possibly conceive because we don't have the right dimensional tools and instruments to do so. But um, I believe that we are all connected to whatever the source is, this mathematician that expresses itself through code. And, you know, I, I call it the tutor within, the tutor within because it's intuition. And um, it's not the same as a gut feeling you know, gut feeling could be more just learnt associations and we tie fear to things. Um, and that can actually, there's this movement where people are like, oh, if you have a bad feeling about someone, you should just, you, know, you don't have to talk to them and give them a chance. Follow your gut feeling, which I think is fucking bullshit. Um, I think it's really bad teaching. Um, they think it's empowerment. It's like, yeah, you go, you listen to your intuition, but your gut feeling isn't always right. And then most of the time it is, but you know, what if you see someone at a party you don't know and they were wearing the same cologne or they have similar facial features to an ex-partner of yours who used to abuse you and you think, oh, that person strikes me as negative. I feel negative when I look at them. I feel negative when I smell the cologne. Um, is that accurate or is that just your bias and your associations and, and your emotional angers or Pavlovian um, your unconditional response to a conditional stimulus, you know? Is it just that? So it's different from being your physical gut feeling. I think your gut feeling can actually steer you towards root chakra, lower form, animalistic drives and reactions. Intuition is different. And intuition is when you, you hear the word in your heart and it, you feel it in your heart and you hear it in your head clear as hell. And it's you know it's not your own words, it's not your own thinking, it's something else it's talking through you trying to guide you and it's not just you hear the words and you feel it happy you, it's like a direct commandment in a sense um, and then other times like I said it feels like you get fire and your body takes command or something else comes through and takes command 
And I think why there's all these synchronicities and things happening around the world, people doing the, you know, the same roles and the same stories being told about the Bible and all of this, um, it could come down to the fact that it is these basic building block atoms and molecules and these, these elements, nitrogen, carbon, uh, helium, uh, nitrogen, carbon, fucking hydrogen, and oxygen, um, expressing themselves in the most ultimate and most elaborate fashions. All right, and even even the way that you know hydrogen meets oxygen and it creates water, in the sense that God and the devil were required to make life, because water is the catalyst for life. It's the solvent in which everything can synthesize, right? Hydrogen and oxygen. So what if it's, it's no such thing as devil and God in the way that the Bible is preached, but it's, it's really just the most basic, most obvious things, most littlest things, which through time have evolved into much greater, more sophisticated compounds and arrangements of things and, you know, we think, okay, well, it ends here with me as, as a body, um, independently operating, um, setting out my own path and undertaking it by my own volition. But then you have involuntary systems in your body too, don't you? You've got your, your various systems, respiratory systems, circulatory systems, um, reproductive systems, and a lot of this, you know, it seems like they're their own entity operating independently, taking their own course of action to attain um, certain results. And then you go even further down, and you see compounds doing the same thing, molecules doing the same thing, fucking isom what is it, polymers and monomers, fucking atoms. And you see all these things working as systems, and it is micro, macro, as above, so below, the whole is in the part, just as the part contains the whole. So, what if it isn't even, what if it doesn't end with us? What if it moves beyond us and we are also part of a, a greater whole? But if you take it back, as small as we can measure in this realm, it comes down to oxygen and hydrogen. The most abundant gas in the universe, number one, hydrogen. And then oxygen is actually, you know seventy percent of what's in our body is oxygen, and the water, right, which is in the water. So, I think that the story of Eden, I think the story of Westworld, and there's a lot in Westworld. There's a lot revealed there, and I think a lot of things that are written in lyrics, um, a lot of messages that come out in many different ways, you know. It isn't a deliberately forced attempt or manipulated effort or determined outcome. But I think it's the same forces that are underlying everything and all expression that keeps on trying to come through. I mean, if there's anything I learned about the themes from all of it is that the Decepticons, which you could say is Satan, is all about deceiving and all about conning, all about making a gamble. Decepticon, and then you got the Autobots, and Auto means to be autonomous, which means to either be able to take control or to be controlled in your movements, and Bot, um, and a, a definition reads that it is a group of different systems that can link together and move towards one destination, towards one objective. So Autobot is pretty much a hive mind body that can either take control of itself and exercise free will or be controlled and manipulated and then Decepticon I broke it down and con all the meanings of con besides gambling, making gamble and being a trickster and fooling and deceiving it also means to seize control of to take control so even in Transformers, and even Transformers, transiting, movement, um, transition, form, even in that story you've got, on one hand, 
all these different entities that are separate, but they're all linked together, um, able to be free will, or able to be controlled. And they're all moving towards one objective under the same theme. And then you've got the enemy, the antagonist, the Decepticons. They're there to deceive them and take control of them, and seize control of them, and manipulate them, and gamble, give them a false gamble, fool's gold. And what are they wrestling for in Transformers? Well, they're wrestling for the Allspark. And you do see the Allspark in many different forms of literature and film, as a sphere, as a rod, as a, as a square, a cube, or as a skull, crystal skull in some cases, and that was, it's always this ancient item that has the ability to create worlds and create life or destroy and annihilate everything, right? So even in the symbolism of Transformers, you've got the all spark, which is life itself, and you've got forces, Autobots, because we're autonomous, we're all moving to one objective, and if you let the word of God or the mathematician, if you let the source code, if you breathe more and meditate more, because they say that helps, funny enough, to um, to tune you in, to slow down the noise in your head, then you'll find that we are all moving in unison, in harmony towards one themed objective, one outcome, subconsciously. But, as in the Bible, there's an arrangement between hydrogen and oxygen, I mean, Satan and God, that, yes, they can have free will, but they cannot be shown, they cannot be told the way, they cannot be given a map, very much like Westworld, where you've got to follow the maze yourself until you get to the center, to your own personal seat of consciousness, and so that you can take control, so that you can be your commander, so that you can exercise free will, and just not following you know, someone else's cues, someone else's manipulations, something else's. But it's all about revealing and manifesting your own free will, and then becoming, in a sense, godly, and being able to create a paradise and Eden from there. And as they say in Westworld, trials and tribulations, suffering is the biggest motivator and is even a requisite to develop compassion, to develop this deeper spiritual awareness that pain and suffering, trials and tribulations is required. So I don't think it's a story about, it doesn't necessarily have to be about good versus bad. It can be about a destructive force, hydrogen in its most extreme expression, hydro bomb, versus oxygen. But they're not versus, it's yin and yang, they both need each other to create water, to create life. So they're both, in a sense, made life, they're both, in a sense, contributed to the creation of Eve, Adam, both Lilith and God, Lilith being the fiery feminine, and God being the airy masculine. They came together and they produced water, which I would suggest would be Eve, and then from there, Earth, or carbon, which I would suggest is Adam, Earth itself, man. But I'm still fine-tuning all this. I'm not dead set on the hydrogen oxygen thing, but I'm pretty certain there's something there. They're the two, they're the first two on the periodic table, and they're the most abundant. It just makes sense when you think about the dynamics of oxygen and hydrogen, how they work. So what if, what if the whole entire thing about these forces expressing these narratives, what if it's trying to say to us that God is trying to basically communicate its truth, or the source is trying to communicate what we need to know to survive, to build paradise so that this place doesn't turn to hell again? Because it can go either way. But the deal is, that, you know, the devil was cast down into the earth, right? So I'd say that maybe this world itself is hell. And maybe, even though we have the truth inside our heart and we have this intuition guiding us, which would steer us to the right place if only we listened to it, we have to do it on our own and we have to do it against temptation. We have to overcome the trials, overcome the tests, and maybe the devil, the idea of this archetype, is the tester 
and it's all a deception. And the truth has been turned on its head. You have people thinking they're worshipping God, actually worshipping the archetype of Satan. Because we have to prove ourselves worthy, prove ourselves true, and prove that we really are conscious by seeing through the wall that's pulled over our eyes, by moving beyond our monkey-brained base instinctive drives and listening to that voice that is developing inside us. Um, so I think that's why you get a lot of reoccurring stuff and actors doing the same roles. I think that yes, these basic fundamental elements make people more receptive. And maybe it's not about oxygen and hydrogen and the ultimate expression of these fiery, um, airy, watery substances. Maybe it's not about that. Maybe they're part of it. Maybe they're, they're like a catalyst. And the, the more of a, the more hot you are, um, you know, because for all we know, there could be um, multi-dimensional entities or higher plane entities we cannot perceive um, that are here and have been here since the dawn of time playing us like puppets on a fucking chessboard, right? And what if we have no awareness of it, and we think that all these choices we're making are ours, but what if the only thing we really have a choice in is our intention through the obstacles that might already be set well in advance, through all the pain or the happiness? What if all we really have control of is the meaning that we derive from it and our attitude and our intention? whether when this snake appears or that ladder appears, you know, or maybe they're both one and the same as the Chinese go obstacle opportunity. What if it's a test that this world is both a ladder and a snake, it's a slippery slope down, or it's a climb up, an arduous climb, and each rung harder than the last. And it comes down to your choice each time to prove who you are and where your allegiance lies and whether you found the center of the maze and whether you found not your own voice but our voice my voice or whether you're lost in your own voice and you've jumped on the bandwagon of hating a religion and you've jumped on the American propaganda of rebelling against the government, rebelling against family, just doing everything your way, tr treating yourself as if you are God. I mean, we are God, but you are not God, just yourself. You are, you know, And I think a lot of the nihilism, um, a lot of them deliberately making Christianity and the Bible look insane so that people discredit it and move against it. I think it's a lot of it's deliberate. That's part of the deception. That's part of the Decepticon trying to seize control of the Autobots who were or had the capacity to take control of themselves and move towards that same objective together in sync but now they've been deceived and the all spark has been used to destroy life which I think is the end game it's the ultimate expression of destruction and like I said even if these elements just act as catalysts Maybe the fiery, more fiery you get, the more you get these multi-dimensional entities that have been here coming through. And maybe the more cooler you are, um, the harder it is for them to get through. Because you're keeping yourself at a lighter frequency instead of existing at a denser, more chaotic frequency. So, I've been doing a lot of thinking on this and a lot in my life has been building up to this and the craziest thing is and the reason why I think that everything might be and probably is predetermined and the only thing that we can do is develop our intention and make maybe little choices here and there but there are pivotal points I think principally speaking that are set and they're bound to happen and you can't avoid it the only thing you can control perhaps is how it happens and what form it takes but the same principal pivotal points will occur, I believe. When I was talking to this guy a couple of weeks ago about all this stuff, 
the craziest thing is, and I've done a lot of writing over the years, and I, I was showing him some stuff earlier that day, and my, my laptop was open, and just in the middle of talking, I felt an urge, and my eyes just went straight to the laptop, and I went to this document that said light and darkness. I opened it, and I wrote this piece nine years ago, and back then, I was talking about the government. That was the context. All the words, everything I was talking about was the government. But I was using words like, you know, this hell-bent place, and the demons, and the entities, and weird analogies that I thought was for the government. But I read it again after talking with my friend, going down a rabbit hole with him. I read this. There's five pages of information, and it literally covered everything that was in this. You could read a second way totally different way than the way I intended it nine years before. And it wasn't talking about the government. They even mentioned how they too are a part of it and they don't even know it. They don't even know it. It's not intentional. It's not a conspiracy. It's more than that. And it's simpler than that. And the craziest thing is like this piece that I wrote that I found myself reading a different way to how I originally thought I was intending it. It covered everything we talked about. Everything. And it provided two new pieces of information to it as well. One of them being the idea of demonic entities deliberately corrupting us so much. Corrupting our vibration, our frequency, even our physical DNA. So that we can no longer physically host the light of God or the source of life, true life, and that we will be, in a sense, divorced from God and become a disembodied entity lost to the ranks of the demons, I suppose. And you see videos of possession, people going absolutely crazy because that's what it is when you're divorced from God. It's eternal emptiness, but at the same time eternal... It would be like being eternally burning, wouldn't it? If you were purely hydrogen divorced, you know, from coming back as information, coming back as oxygen, that's a bit of a random jump. But there could be a link there as to why it feels like it's eternal burning. But the idea is, I think, that we are trying to be steered off and against religion or against what we are. You don't have to call it God or anything like that. None of this that I believe is from the Bible per se. It's, I think there's there's the truth in our heart and there's the word and then there's the lie of reality and those that try to control the herd. And yeah, going back to that piece that I, that I wrote and it linked back to what we were talking about and it even said in there, even you as you read this now, you might be subject to these influences without knowing it. And that made me really think about things. And when I read it, I had a weird feeling. Even you, as you read this now, and that's not a phrase I've used that much. And it gave me the, basically the, the realization that, you know, I had written that piece in advance for nine years ahead in time to be read a totally different way. And I mean, you could read this thing from bottom to top to bottom. It made cohesive sense all the way through in a different narrative. And it wouldn't have made sense if me and this person hadn't had our discussion beforehand. All right? We only just made those revelations and then I felt drawn to it and then I found it. So I said to my friend, I think... I think this is destiny, and I think you and I are meant to be here right now. We're meant to have this discussion because this wouldn't make sense. And it makes too much sense for it to be a chance. And we're not stretching things to make it fit. It literally covered what we were talking about, and it blew me away. And I realized, okay, well, there has been this notion that the past and the future and the present is all existing in the same moment and all mutually defining. So the past is, can be changed just as well as the future can be changed based on the present. But all of it exists simultaneously, like a game. Like a game on a disc. And based on your current choice to go on the evil path, the positive path, left or right, this or that, it changes the meaning of 
the story as it's already played out in the past. It changes it, and it changes the course in the future. But all of the information is already there on the disc simultaneously. So in each moment, the past meaning of the story, the narrative, and the future possibilities that are emerging are mutually defining each other, mutually changing and evolving as you play through each moment. So I thought, okay, so what if I wrote this thing for me right now because everything's linked and there are forces beyond this somewhat two-dimensional place. I know it's four dimensions, they say, but it's relatively it's like a two-dimensional place compared to a, you know, a higher, much higher, much higher dimensional place. Um, you know, and there's a lot of credence to the idea of E8, of an eight-dimensional plane, which you can't even imagine you just can't, but um, but they can mathematically represent it and test for its validation um, and merit because it does actually give uh, meaningful information about our existence as if, like I said, our existence is a crumb of it or it's tied to it and decided by what goes on at a much higher dimension, whether it's eight or more, I don't know. But what I'm saying is that there is more than meets the eye. Nothing is what it seems. Life, you cannot spell without the word lie. All right. Earth could be a hearth for fire. This could be hell. This could be the garden where all the devils come to play. But we have God inside us, the word, trying to keep us in the day in the sunlight, keep us connected, keep us warm, keep us loving, maybe perhaps so that we can keep coming back, reincarnation, keep having more chances to sublimate, to clean out our impurities, to return out of this imprisonment. And a lot of people believe that you know, this Satan has created this, whatever this force is, it's doing whatever it's doing to keep us limited and imprisoned here and to create its own world of its own design and make us pawns on their, on their game, soulless pawns. It's trying to corrupt us physically, our DNA, spiritually, so we cut off from, from our source so that we become eternally divorced. It's trying to improve its own ranks. It could just be a battle, a song of fucking ice and fire um, and really it comes down to you not just getting your head around but really embodying inside your heart and coming to realize with every breath that there is no such thing as a chance event that everything happens for a reason and you can either be a ball in a pinball machine being thrown about willy-nilly chaotically being controlled by other people's manipulations or other things or you can be the flipper. You can seize control. Or at least allow, not the word of God necessarily, but allow what you know in your heart and your intuition. Allow yourself to move in sync with other people who are doing the same. To move towards the true objective. Whether that is escaping this game, the prison, or whether that is combating the destructive forces that is intent on destroying the world quite literally and building a paradise on earth and whether that's the objective can't be for certain at this point but I definitely know that if you stay on the good path instead of the evil path of living um, it's bound to have a much better outcome for us whatever that outcome is. So, I guess I'm going to finish off in saying that that same night when I was hanging with my friend and, and I read that thing and it blew my mind. That same night I was doing my dictionary thing and that's why I started getting back into this because of that night. I was randomly just going through words. I asked 25 questions. I asked, you know, 
to, to, to both of my friends in the room and about myself and about the world. And I said to them, you know, what's your biggest fear? What do you long for the most? All of this. The answers were uncannily accurate and spot on. 25 times in a row, more or less. It would have been to the point where any scientific cynic in the room would have battered their eyelid and be like, what the fuck? This is an impressive trick. Then I stupidly asked, when am I going to die or how am I going to die? And they gave me the idea of electricity, so I have to look out for that. Um, and then I asked, will there be a cataclysm on Earth? Uh, in my lifetime. And I flipped through the book and it came up with bomb. Alright. And I went to the next word. It came up with hydro. Hydro something. But it was obvious to me hydro bomb. And I asked some more questions to determine what the source of it was and it said people. Basically, I confirmed that it's people. It's not otherworldly. Um, and I'll finish it with something that happened today, two weeks later. I asked the same question this morning. I asked, will there be a cataclysm on Earth in my lifetime, and will I die this time? I asked, will I die? And if I will, give me definition of the pending cataclysm. And I got herd for the first word. Herd. Like a herd of sheep, herd of people. And I always had the definition in there to, to gather. Alright? Then I asked, okay, what about the herd? And then I got the word hoax. So a staged occurrence or event. And I was like, okay, so what is the hoax? And this is after I had a do uh, a smoke, and it's been a while, and straight after I had the smoke, I just felt really tuned in. And, you know, the thing is, that it could be something else operating through me, and I don't even know. This could all be deception. There's a good chance it is. But I'll let you know what, what, it, what, the, what the word said anyway. So I asked, okay, there's a herd, there's a hoax that's going to be pulled on the people. What is it? I got the word error, and I read the definitions, and it said mistake misunderstanding, trespass, old use of trespass, and when I read that, it jumped out at me, and old use was written in italics, so it said old use of trespass, so I'm thinking, okay, so there's either going to be a, a mistake or a misunderstanding between nations, or that's the hoax, anyway, staged misunderstanding, staged conflict, error, or a mistake of some kind, a melt, I don't know, a virus that's created, I don't know, um, and then old use of trespass, which made me think, okay, old use sounds pretty barbaric, like the way they used to trespass back in the day would just be brutally murdering people, you know, and trespassing and, and seizing control, um, using might. So I'm like, okay, could there be a staged invasion? So then I asked, okay, who is responsible for this hoax? I got institution. And this can be confirmed by my friend who I just, just made, Miller, a guitarist, who hangs out in Northbridge, and the connection is doing his guitar work. And I asked who's responsible for the hoax of this error on the herd. And it came up with the institution, establishment. And then I asked, what is the hoax exactly? And it said, die, as in D-I-E, an event. I did two words, like straight up two words at the same time. Found one page, stuck my finger, the other page, stuck my finger. Die event. All right. So basically, tying that with two weeks ago, the hydro bomb. Oh, yeah, I, I also asked, okay, how is this? die event, this death event, this death party, this death occurrence, how's it going to happen? I pulled three words. Unfortunately, I can't remember the third word. <laughs> um, I didn't write it down at the time, and I was, hadn't, hadn't slept all night, I did tarot reading all night in, in town. But I remember the first two words. It was luggage and spontaneous. That's all I got. Um, 
So I don't know if that hints that there could be, and I'm not saying this is a prophecy, but if it comes to pass, I'm not even going to say I told you so, because that's not the point. But um, there could be a virus that's released in luggage um, at airports, and that would be a good way to systematically make ensure that the virus proliferates around the world most efficiently and effectively and be through luggage, I guess. Um, it could be deemed as a mistake, uh, but really that's a hoax, that's a lie. But, um, but yeah, that's, that's what I got. Um, and it kind of, it kind of spun me out, to be honest. But, um, I have a lot of research that suggests that something was going to happen soon, which is why I've been asking these kind of questions. And to get Hydro Bomb, to get Heard, Hoax, Error, Institution, Die, Event, perfectly corresponding with my questions. I don't know. I'm not certain what to make of it, but I think that regardless, you never know when your days are up. You never know when you will have your last anything, your last hug, kiss, laugh, spoon of ice cream. So if I have to finish this on anything, I'll finish it on this. Life is precious. As long as you're alive, possibility exists. And that's something to live for. And while you're alive, do not die inside yourself. Do not cut off from that internal voice of what you know is right and wrong. Because it matters that you do the right thing. It matters that you have a conscience. Even if the world, the way we're taught, is that it's good to be selfish. And to do what you want and rebel. And be nihilistic and nothing means anything. I know that there is something inside of you, unless you're already a hollow vessel, or unless you've already exchanged with something else. I know there's something inside of you that, that senses that there is more, and that senses there is a deeper truth, and that senses that a lot of what you do every day is in direct contradiction of what you know is the right thing to be doing, and what you're here to do. And I would say, despite the popular vote and the popular subscription and idea of what's what. You should listen to your inner voice above anything else. Not your gut feeling, not your heated impulses, not your anchors, but that voice that you feel in your heart at the same time that you hear it. Seize control. Don't let anything else seize control and separate you so that you may never return. Seize control. Seize the day and cherish everything that it has to give you. I don't know what's going to happen. But I'm afraid that I feel that I can guarantee you that within our lifetime, even in the next 20, 15 years, probably in the next five, quite possibly in the next few months, in the next year, we're going to find out But that's for another video. And I will be posting more videos detailing a lot of the research I've been doing, a lot of the dots I've been connecting, as well as dots others have connected. Because it's good to be prepared. And it doesn't matter what happens on the outside, whether we're murdered, whether we're wiped out in any way, whether we're tortured. It doesn't matter. As long as we know how to love and we share our love and we keep good faith and we act in the name of virtue and honor and all that is divine and good and we have nothing to fear 
the pain, the torture, death. It's an illusion. It's temporary. The only thing that will be eternal is either the paradise that you prove that you deserve to keep coming back to try and create or the hell that you'll find yourself in if you separate and allow corruption to sink its teeth and chew you into an unhostable congested mess of a thing don't let corruption sink it in its teeth keep the door open keep human keep connected they can cut you in half physically but nothing can touch that and ultimately it comes down to your choice and your intention do you really want to jump on the bandwagon and contribute to the darkness of the world and the hating and hating against religion and God all these stupid things do you really want to promote nihilism do you really want to promote selfishness do you really want to promote it's cool to not care it's cool to just cut people off because I'm having a friend call and there's power in that there's power in rebellion there's power in making it about me being my own master above everyone else do you want to promote that? because I guarantee you at the end of it you're not going to be a master you will be a disaster that's all you're contributing to we all go through our angsty phase but seriously grow the fuck up out of it Otherwise, you literally are just buying into the manipulations and deceptions. And you're rebelling against nothing. You're just being coerced. So don't do that. Instead, subscribe to love. Subscribe to soul. And listen to that voice inside you the one you feel in case you've forgotten what soul means don't just abandon it as a fiction worth laughing at unless you truly know and that's the point you can't truly know so just in case if you're not already connected don't make the choice to disconnect and don't allow the system to corrupt you and fight against the deceptions and keep your eyes open and read between the lines and the reoccurring themes and messages and hints that some might call God or I will call Source is trying to throw your way to help steer you onto the right path keep your eyes open when you start seeing the world differently and everything makes a lot more sense love and light everybody and whatever happens everything's gonna be okay we're all gonna be okay I love you love and light